Hey everybody, Artie with Expedition Trailers here, and today we're gonna be winterizing the 2023 Voyager trailer. As you can see behind me, got a little bit of snow on the mountains. It's starting to get cold, and so we need to make sure that our Voyager trailer is ready to uh, be stored for the winter, if that's what you're gonna be doing. So first step in this process is make sure that your trailer is on somewhat of a level surface. As you can maybe kind of tell here in my driveway, it's a little slanted. So I went ahead and flipped the truck and trailer around so that I could drain that water tank appropriately. And uh, the other thing is you want to get the PDF of the winterization guide, uh, either on your phone or printed out. And that's available through expeditiontrailers.com or through your dealer. So first step is going to be turning off the Truma combi unit and this is done inside in the cabin on the control panel so you just want to make sure both the furnace and the water heater are off and once that step is done step number two is going to be depressurizing the water system and that's going to be done by first of all turning off the water pump at the back at the red arc unit and then turning on the faucet in the kitchen area, and then also plugging in and turning on the shower in the front of the trailer. Okay, so now that we've got the Truma Combi off, we've depressurized the system, now it's time to drain the tank. That's step three. And depending on which uh, Voyager you have, the drain is uh, located right here on all models but it could either be a plug or just a petcock valve and that's what this one is so we'll just open this up and allow this to drain now remember you need to have the trailer in a slightly nose high position for this so that all the water comes to the back While the water tank is draining, we can move on to step four, which is putting the Truma Combi into bypass mode. In order to do this, you're gonna need a 5 16 wrench, and we're gonna take off this cover plate right here. And the Truma Combi is located right behind this. Following along with the PDF here, the second step in step four, now that we've removed the false wall here, is locating the bypass valves for the Truma Combi. And those can be found right here, this black valve, and right here. And what you wanna do is turn these valves, the top one down and the bottom one here on the backside up, and that puts the Truma into bypass mode. Moving on to step five and six, if you'd like to capture the water from the Truma Combi uh, water tank, water heater tank, then you would place a vessel or bucket, whatever, underneath, uh, basically right here, there's a little hose underneath the trailer that the water will drain out of. And then in step six, you wanna find this yellow handle right here and pull that out. And when you do, you will see water draining underneath the trailer. So you'll wanna wait for the Truma to completely drain. Now that most of the water is removed from the system, we wanna go ahead and reinstall the drain plug or close the petcock valve depending on what your trailer has.
So now we're ready to move on to step nine. And in step nine, it's very important that we set our compressor to 45 PSI. We don't want to overpressurize the system and risk potentially blowing out uh, some portion of that water system. Now that we have our air compressor set to 45 PSI and we have the air nozzle out here by the trailer, uh, the first thing before we uh, blow air into the water fill port, we want to make sure our shower is plugged in and set to the warm position right here. And that will allow um, water to be blown out through this and uh, through the shower handle. Also go ahead and make sure that the shower handle is on. Now we're ready to blow air into the water fill port on the Voyager trailer. Now there's a few methods or ways that you could do this. Uh, the one that is explained in the PDF is by using a rubber nozzle on the end of a little handheld blower right on a uh, from a compressor uh, an alternative method that we've found which is pretty slick is if you gently remove this little lanyard right here just kind of wiggle it just a little bit you can pop that out revealing a little hole right here and that just so happens to fit perfectly on the end of this barbed fitting on a uh, for this uh, air handle here so we'll just put this nozzle into this hole and go ahead and press and you can hear some water in that breather line we're going to give it a few minutes to let that breather hose blow any water out that may be in the line. Okay, now that we're at this point, the water tank is drained. We've drained the Truma Combi and put it into bypass mode. And we've done the initial blowout on the breather line of the tank. We wanna come back to the back here and turn on the pump. That is going to do a couple things. Number one, it's going to expel any water that might be in the lines, and it's also going to provide a path for that air to blow out any residual water. Okay, now I can hear, I've got my pump on, and I can hear that running right now. I'm gonna go ahead and blow in compressed air into the tank again at 45 psi and i'm also going to put place my finger over the breather hose here and watch for any water that might be coming out of the shower handle here what this is doing is using the air to carry out any remaining water that may be in the lines. Okay, I've gotten a few, a little bit. I can see some more starting to push out here. This can take a few minutes so I won't bore you watching me do it <laughs> okay now that I can see that there's little to no water coming out of the shower handle I'm gonna go ahead and this is in the hot position I'm gonna go ahead and change that over to the cold position And I'm going to repeat the process. You probably noticed when I took my finger away from the breather vent hose that a lot of air started coming out. 
That's because what we're doing is essentially pressurizing the tank and using that compressed air to uh, move through the lines and uh, push out any water that might be in them. Okay, it looks like we're pretty clear. So now we're gonna repeat this process for the kitchen sink. Now I'm gonna go back to the back and turn on the kitchen sink. Again, we wanna be in hot and cold water separately to make sure we get all of that out of each line. Okay, once you feel confident that you've sufficiently blown out all of the water out of the lines, both on the cold and on the hot side, very important, uh, you wanna come back to the back and go ahead and turn off that water pump. The water pump is designed to run dry for a period of time. You just don't wanna leave it on for an hour or so. <laughs> Okay, now that we're finished blowing out the air, the water lines in the Voyager trailer, if you use this little method I showed earlier, you want to go ahead and replace that little lanyard. And the last step is really just a maintenance item, and that is taking out the filter, the debris filter that is right next to the pump. Now this, the filter is located right back here. It's a little hard to see, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that out, clean it out, and then we'll button this all back up. Okay, here's that filter. And actually it doesn't look too bad. There's a few little things in there. We'll go ahead and wash that out and put it back in. That's it. That's all the steps to winterizing the Voyager trailer. And if you followed along with me in this, congratulations. Your Voyager trailer is now winterized. Be sure to check out our website and YouTube channel for more helpful videos and how-tos on maintaining and caring for your Voyager trailer. We're so thankful to have you as part of our family and want you to have the best experience in your trailer. If there's anything else that you'd love to see, be sure to leave a comment and let us know so we can make more videos just like these for you.